afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Sun just set here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, hope you're doing well. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Really happy today to have our guests with us. We've got a really accomplished panel. I think we have a good topic for discussion. Um, we're joined today by Linda Hansen, um, President Emerita of Hamlin University and a nationally recognized consultant in higher education. Um, Tina Patterson, the principal for Jade Solutions. She's a recognized arbitrator and a mediator. And we also have Amy Schmitz, um, a prolific scholar who has been at the University of Colorado, University of Missouri, and now holds a chaired position at the Ohio State University Moritz College of Law. So thank you for joining us. Um, I think we've had a good topic. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the presidential election coming up, concerns about the age of the two leading candidates. And so I'd like to talk first about is 82 all to be president? And where are we with ageism in our society right now? Are things getting worse? Are they getting better? What's your perception of ageism in the presidential election? And um, Linda, would you like to start us? <laughs> of course. Um, you know, the older I get, the more I think, um, you know, oh, you know my, I, <clears throat> my actual age has jump, you know, jumped up another decade. And yet I feel like I've, I've gone back a decade. I mean, it's all relative in terms of how we feel about our age. Um, I think it's obviously a historical moment to have two 80 year olds uh, running or close to 80 year olds all in one camp in one instance. Um, I think a lot of people misinterpret um, vitality or the appearance of vitality to be something that ages one. So that if one is perhaps more sedate, you know, in, in earlier times, we might have thought of that as a person who is more reserved, a person of wisdom a person who might be more approachable because they're not out there in your face, if you will. Whereas we look at someone else who's a very much an extrovert, who's, who's pounding the, the table and waving the arms and asking for attention in every which way, we might think, well, that person's more vigorous, that person's younger because of the way they appear. So I think oftentimes we, we look for signals of youth and vitality uh, in the wrong places. Uh, they might very well be there. The wisdom, the knowledge, the intelligence, the ability to perform uh, seems to be drifting away because we are locking ourselves into some of the features of what age, the appropriate age might be to be president. Thank you, Linda. Um, Tina? I, I completely agree with Linda. I, I am surprised, um, and I shouldn't be surprised, the age of these candidates wasn't so much talked about in the first round of elections in 2016 um, timeframe. It's become more apparent, and I think part of it is, as Linda has highlighted, this correlation that we're making between vitality, cognitive ability, and leadership ability with age. And I, I, I'll just say, I'm not so certain we can make that correlation. Um, the, I think the other factor here is that we have a, a growing number of ele uh, individuals who can vote, who are looking at these individuals and, and making the correlation between a great aunt, a great uncle, a grandfather, a great grandfather. I actually have a colleague who refers to the current president as grandpa, which gives me, you know, that coloring already tells me this person thinks, you know, maybe it's time for you to not be in the position of leadership. I, but I also think it has a lot to do with our Western perspective regarding leadership. Historically, we vote for the candidate that we find the most attractive, usually the taller. When we talk about executive presence and a leader, especially the leader of a head of state, should have a certain profile. Um, and that, that same profile applies when we look in the business setting. The men should look a certain way, be a certain height, be a certain age. The women should look a certain way, be a certain height. So we have two candidates who, for all intents and purposes, have the the height requirement or close to the height requirement. It's their age that we're talking about. And where does that fit into the cognitive ability? Yeah, well, the American Psychological Association says that ageism is one of the last socially acceptable prejudices. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, Amy? 
Yeah, so I would just um, build on to what Tina said. I agree 100%. And I also think that often it's all about the way the media presents like the picture of it. So it's been quite concerning to me in the way that media really paints a picture about someone's age and what that means for one individual versus another. And so it's along with what Linda had mentioned, this idea that vitality is being strong and mean in some circumstances, um, <laughs> instead of really thinking um, in depth about really, are you a good leader? What have you done? I listened to a podcast recently and kind of really looking at the last four years and thinking about really the good things that happened. It's quite amazing that we navigated um, what could have been a recession. And I think that we often lose track of that because there's so much media around age and what that means. Yeah. Special counsel Robert Herc recently released a report about um, whether there should be prosecution for President Biden's handling of classified documents after he got out of office. And he concluded, no, I don't think she should, he could be prosecuted here. But then kind of threw in this line, I found him to be a sympathetic um, elderly old man or elderly. I found him to be, I'll quote it exactly, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. What do you think of that? I mean, about having that in the report. I think it went beyond the bounds of his uh, charge and what he was supposed to do as a special counsel um, and investigator. Um, he could have expressed his conclusion probably in five pages. And I understand it was many, many more pages than that. I think that um, to the point of, of the twist of information and the, the inflections that are made and the insinuations that are made just the word elderly, when we're thinking about an, a president, a sitting president, and then also an election year for the next president, and we're using words like elderly and well-meaning, uh, that kind of a thing in, immediately denigrates the person, denigrates both of them, and, so, and basically in, makes us wonder, well, do they really have their intelligence? Are they able to conduct the business of the country? Are they able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with le world leaders? And yet, if we just reflect back over the last year, if we were able to look at the travel schedule of how our president has been all over the world in incredibly tight time frames, it's almost as if he's jumping from here to here, and you wonder how in the world is he be able to do all of that? I of I've often thought, I'm not sure I could have the physicality to be able to take that kind of a schedule. So again, I'm kind of back to there's more than just the mental agility. There's the physical ability uh, to carry out the, the duties of, of the office. Words matter. Yeah, you know, senior citizen, um, elderly, they've got negative connotations. Mm -hmm. You know, would we be better off if we just refer to somebody by their actual numerical age? Um, mm -hmm. Wouldn't quite have so many connotations that go along with it. Um, Tina, do you have any more thoughts? I do. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to backtrack to what Linda said, which is words matter. Uh, and the fact that this person has opined, given a personal opinion about an area to which he has no area, no expertise. We, we don't know what the president's cognitive ability is. We don't know what his memory is. So to, to share that statement in a report that's really supposed to be investigating the facts and coming up with a, if you will, a, a, an answer or a conclusion based on what's been presented. We don't know what whether his memory is good or bad. We can guess. Um, at any given moment, most of us forget something or don't recall something and need to either be prodded or suddenly when we're not trying to deal with five or six different things, suddenly remember, oh yes, this is what I need to take care of. It's not necessarily a factor of age. It's oftentimes you are responding to multiple stimuli and it's the stimuli that's getting your attention at that very moment that you're going to be compelled to react or respond to. So one, the report, but also the words. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna go back to this concept of Western versus other cultures. Um, this time last year I was in India and it was interesting because I was with a group where I was one of the youngest in the group. The people over 60, everyone over 60 was treated. They got on the plane first. When it was time to board the bus to get on the plane, they were given special compensation, um, 
compensation, and when I mean that, I'm not talking monetary, but literally people made way. Oh, you're over 60 here. Oh, well, you know, you're old. You know, get in line like everyone else. There's the the that difference in approach and opinion. And in some ways, this you're you are becoming less than at with age is the complete opposite of what many people in this space are are feeling. Um, going back to the business setting, we see this in the intergenerational workforce. The the Gen Z says the baby boomers and what is sometimes called the silent generation need to go home and stay home. And the baby boomers and silent generation are saying you need to come to work. That this is playing out even in this report and even in the way that we use terms. There should be no, no stigma attached to being a senior citizen. This person yeah. has earned their place, earned their right to be on in, in this space. The, and, you know, they could be in, in a different capacity altogether. So it's it's that stigma that's attached to the word. And part of it is we've allowed it and we continue to allow, but also reshaping that conversation. Yeah, I mean, when you think about when you look at late night television hosts and you see what some of those skits are and how people are mocked because of their age and you think, could you have that same skit based on race or ethnicity right now, based on gender? Probably not. Um, you know, but somehow it's still acceptable uh, to do it based on age. I mean, it is discouraging how this national debate about our candidates has kind of kind of veered towards ageism um, instead of about leadership. Um, experience is worth a lot. And I, I think one strength of President Biden's is his ability to assembled a really good team. Um, he, he has wonderful people working for him. And, um, you know, and that's because he's got the experience to know who's available, how to use them. Um, uh, and instead of focusing on things like that, we're, we're getting distracted um, by this just numerical debate about, about, about age. Uh, Amy? Yeah, so I would add in that I think it's also important to think about labels. So when you label someone the way that they did in that report about Biden, um, old man, right? You label someone. I think it creates a whole different sort of picture of who they are and what that means. So for example, even in class today, teaching contract law, we were looking at unconscionability and they label people even in court opinions about someone who's illiterate or who, who maybe doesn't have like a lot of education and they make a whole lot of assumptions about people based on labels. And so I'm very um, concerned by the label to say elderly, old, right, but that label means something. And then that creates a whole kind of connotation that may or may not be right. As we've discussed, you know, they may be perfectly vibrant and perfectly in line with understanding best practices and best things that they can do. But I think that we make a lot of assumptions based on labels in our society. And we have to be very careful with that. Um, even today, I was very encouraged because students noticed that. We were reading different cases and they saw that in the court's opinion. And a student raised his hand and he said, you know, that's not fair. And I love that. To me, that is exciting about students and being able to like discern that this is an assumption that is not necessarily true. And I think it's really important for us, even as a society, when we go forth toward the um, toward the election, is never to make assumptions about a label. And that does worry me if they are thinking about things in terms of labels, the whole old man thing, you know, because that's not really fair. You know, the youngest person might be an old person <laughs> um, in other ways, right? Like intuitively and innovation and all the rest of it. But either way, like, I do think that's concerning to me. And I also want to add one other point, which is I feel like things have become so politicized in the way that they even use this, which is very concerning to me, right? Like, why aren't we looking at both sides? Um, Democrat, Republican, they're both old, the people who are running. But it seems as though everything is focused on Biden. But why are we ignoring the fact that Trump is also old? Yeah. Uh, David, can I add another point? Sure. Um, and, and this goes back to what Linda said, and, and there, there's actual photography that shows this. The physicality of the job as the president of the United States, the demands of the job. I think we saw this more most 
clearly with President, former President Obama because he actually gave a snapshot of his day. And we can safely assume that the other presidents have done more or less the same day, same thing, where their day starts at 5 a.m. and ends sometimes at 2 a.m. They may get a phone call in the middle of the night. The stress that that person is under, because that call at 2 a.m. is generally not pizzas being delivered. It's usually something urgent, something that requires them getting up and being able to think quickly. I say all this to say, when we look at pictures of former presidents, when they came into office and when they left office, they look, and I no disrespect intended, stressed and haggard. They, many of them did their best, President Clinton, the younger President Bush and President Obama, all of them had some form of physical fitness that they were involved in, but you see what they look like six months later and as a refreshed individual. So the, you know, piling onto this, talking about age, let's talk about really the demands of the job and how that can literally wear down someone. I, I'm not a physician, but I would say it's safe to say the stress of the job, not just for one term, but for two terms, is probably the equivalent of, you know, a lifetime of, of stress activity and the stress on the body, the stress on the mind, all of that. And that's why, yeah. that's why experience is so important, because mm -hmm. it isn't a job that you can do alone. You really need to have talented, reliable, smart, experienced people around you and to have the ability to identify who those people are. Um, and, uh, you know, that's one of the one of the benefits of, of being a certain age is that you've seen a lot, you've met a lot, you know a lot, and you can really assemble um, a great supporting team. Um, yeah. Linda, were you going to step in? Could I add, add kind of yeah. something that's sort of in a different direction? You know, one of the things I think that's ironic is is that we are we are in an economy that has been developed over the last four years, which everyone was expecting to tank. Everyone was expecting to have a recession. Something really, really bad was going to happen. And, and yet the major driver of the economy, in addition to the expertise of the companies and their evaluation and their growth, is also the invest in the investments that people who are in retirement, I like to use preferment rather than retirement, because there are many, I almost look at like this is the last third, you know, your life kind of divides itself up into, into different periods of time. And the people who were accruing, accruing wealth or accruing money to, to live and to um, sustain themselves in the last 20, 30 years of their lives, uh, was perhaps for putting their grandchildren through college, uh, for a variety of things, maybe being able to travel, do a lot of those kinds of things. But that's a major mover in our economy right now. Travel, leisure, the kinds of things that people buy as a consumer. That's a whole marketplace. Just take any show and look at the ads. They're all about being well, being healthy. Here's the drug. This is something else that's going to help you. This is something that's going to make your life better. And all of the people who are on those ads, you know, they're not 30-year-olds. They're, they're people who are in their 60s and their 70s. Oh, I got this new drug or I did this new thing and I'm in great health now. So it's assuming that all of these things are being uh, indulged in by that demographic. And it has a direct relationship, I think, to the economy. And what is Biden, for example, getting blasted for all, you know, all they don't know that many of the things that he has put into place and his team. I agree so much with what David's saying, that he's got a fantastic team. Uh, and, and Tina, your reference to how people look. I've been watching Tony Blinken over the last year. He has gone completely gray in one year. And that has to come in, in, the, in the line of, of duty, in the line of his work. I would also just echo the team aspect. So, um, Dave, what you mentioned, I really feel strongly on that. You know, if you're wise, you've been around, you know a lot, you're going to assemble a smart team. And that's really important when we think about government and how it, like, honestly, that, I was trying to explain that to others, sort of who think, oh, well, Biden isn't, but look at the team. 
The mm-hmm. team matters because that's who's going to run things. And even right now, um, Linda, great points because we've made it through what could have been a recession. Why is that? Well, I think the team was smart, right? They were wise. And the team was able to navigate this idea of how do we navigate the interest rates when we're in an inflationary period, right? And so it was a very like difficult dance to make sure that we did it just right. I don't know if people really realize how amazing it is that we did not go into recession. And that is part of the team and the people who are assembled to work with the Biden team. Yeah, if we look backwards and recall what every economist of any note was saying, they were all predicted recession. Everybody was. Um, So it is pretty amazing that we did not stumble into that, that we somehow avoided that. You know, and that's that's an expert hand um, that kind of guided us through that. So we're talking about politics and we're talking about ageism. Um, Just to expand our focus a little bit, do you see ageism in any other parts of our lives? Anybody can jump in? (laughs) Every time I go to buy a a piece of of clothing, I see it. You know, um, I used to be able to to wear, wear slacks that I didn't have to go and have them hemmed up. And now, you know, it's because they're all, you know, Again, it's a broad sweeping statement, but I think the, even the way clothing is is made, it is geared toward a certain demographic. And unfortunately, people who are of a certain age end up having to gravitate to a couple of, of purveyors of, of clothing that really fit them, fit real bodies, that fit people who are of a certain age. Because a, a 12, when I was 30, is not a 12 today, believe me, it's not. So uh, maybe you're not relating to this, David, but women will relate to this. You know, things have changed. And those uh, manufacturers who've been able to adjust their products to women, and I speak mostly about women, especially skincare products, this product will make you look 30 years younger. I mean, yeah. have you got a brown spot on your face? Have you, is your hair falling out? All these kinds of things. The first thing I think is, okay, I, you know, maybe we don't need to be fixed. Maybe we are just fine, you know, the way we are. But there's this assumption like, oh, we got to keep looking younger. Yeah. To me, that's ageism. Academia, right? Like you look at an older professor and right away you think, oh, they're not going to understand. They're not with it. You know, and even my sisters are both teachers. And uh, my one sister has gone gray, but she's dying her hair. And I asked her, why not just go gray? She's like, students wouldn't respect her if her hair was gray which to me is so sad, but I think ageism is why. Uh, Tina, have any I thoughts? See, absolutely. Uh, to Linda's point, I see it in the in the business setting and I see it on two sides. I see it in hiring. Um, and is this person, can this person perform their duty? Are they too old? Are they going to, instead of looking at, can they perform the essential job function that you have written? And I, we see it in settings where when it comes to technology, well, such and such is, and a label is placed. Well, he's older, so he's not going to be able to do it. Or she's older, she's technology averse. You don't know that until you've actually spoken with the person. And it goes the other way. We've talked about ageism, looking at those who are older in years, but it can also go the other way. As I mentioned before, having someone you, you're going to talk to in an interview and assuming, oh, her her um, information indicates she's X years old or she re- recently graduated and you're expecting the person to come in and not look necessarily appropriate for work or for an interview. It goes both ways. But again, back in that intergenerational workforce, this constant push-pull, who's got the power, who's going to be the decision maker and giving each other the grace and space to say, you bring something to the table. Let's see where it is, what it is and where does it fit in the bigger picture instead of automatically assuming there's a limit, a limitation, or you can't do something. My cousin um, does post-production video work. And uh, at one point, he was president of Richard Branson's um, post-production company. He did post-production work for Madonna for the biggest pop stars. Um, this year, he turned 60. Um, he's got this... this long resume of accomplishments, but people are not hiring him now. Um, yeah. You know, in that world, you turn 60, regardless of, he's the same guy. Um, he's got all the talents he had before and he's he's 
better than he ever was, but he's really encountering um, difficulty in that industry. So I, I do think that it, that it is kind of pervasive and we do need to push back against it and be aware. And when we see somebody mocking older people as a kind of a, you know, this is, this is our theme for our comedy, we got to draw the analogy to other groups that are being disadvantaged and say that, look, you wouldn't tolerate for these other groups. Don't tolerate it here either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to call it out. You know, I, I happened to be, you know, getting on an elevator the other day and there was this workman and he had his light and he had his ladder. And, and so when I looked at him, I said, there's a man with a ladder. He's got a, he's got a day before him. And so I started to chat him up and I could see, because he was a nice, attractive young man and he was surprised. I, I could see the surprise on his face that I was trying to engage him. And we had a lovely conversation, but they just don't expect that kind of a conversation. You know, they don't expect to be engaged, you know, by someone like me. Uh, whereas maybe uh, someone younger, they would expect to have a look, I mean, you know, a little bit of a conversation or whatnot. And I just do it just for the heck of it. I think it's fun, you know, to just, just you know, get people talking. And they always react, they generally react very positively. I'm looking at our clock. I see we've got a minute and 15 seconds left. So time flies when we're having fun. Um, right. Any final thoughts? I'll start with Tina. Hey, I, you know, I think about how, how much in our, our lifetime, when we're young, we want to be older. And then we reach a point, it's usually around 40, when we realize, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. And now, because of where we are as a society, it's, you know, don't you want to be young again? And the answer is no. I love exactly where I am. That's great. Uh, Amy? So my big takeaway is labels. I feel like labels aren't appropriate. We need to look at the people and think about how they are and what they can do and not put labels on people. And that, to me, is discrimination no matter what, to put a label on someone and assume negative or positive um, based on that label. And Linda? I would just say, finally, you know, if we could get the message of live in the present, if we could just live in the present, I think we'd all be better off. Well, thank you for a really wonderful conversation. I can't believe how quickly the time flew by. Um, uh, it's a rich topic and one we need to talk about more. Um, yes. I'm watching my clock. I think we're out of time. I want to thank everybody for joining us and hope you turn into Think Tech Hawaii again. And I think we're out. Mm -hmm.